Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. It'll make you feel a whole heck of a lot better. It'll make you feel as good as I am. Guys, today is new battery day. Gigaparts has three new lithium iron phosphate batteries. They look like this. PO4 power from Gigaparts. Guys, they got a 12 amp hour battery, which is this right here, going for $99.95. They've got a 24 amp hour battery going for $199.95. And a 50 amp hour battery going for $349.95. That's a steal. They've also got a 6 amp charger and a 15 amp charger, two different kinds of chargers you can buy uh, to charge your batteries up. But if you guys want to save 5%, there is a coupon code in the description. Make sure you use code HRM4 at checkout. That will be where your discount is applied. If you want to save 5%, save money. Christmas time's coming up. You want a new battery, you want to save some money, use that coupon code. All right, guys, let's uh, take a look around at this new PO4 power battery from Gigaparts and see what she can do. Let's take a look at this bad Jackson. Beautiful, beautiful design. Uh, it's actually IP54 water rated. The whole thing is sealed up. So I'm not saying leave this out in the rain, but it gets a little wet, not gonna hurt anything. We've got two, uh, I forget what kind of connectors these are, but love this. You got a battery capacity and voltage meter. So if we hit this little refresh button, that's gonna turn it on. We can see our voltage, we're at 13.3 volts here. And if we push it again, uh, this says it's capacity. I would take this with a ginormous grain of salt. I don't think this capacity meter is accurate at all. When I got this battery, uh, it said 80% charged, and then I charged it for, uh, I put eight amp hours into it to get it up to 100%. So I don't think that is very accurate at all uh, on the capacity, but the voltage, uh, it seems to be pretty accurate on that. This uh, settings button here doesn't seem to do anything. I've long pressed it, I've short pressed it, I've held it in with the other buttons. I was I was hoping that maybe uh, it would give us like a current draw or something in real time so we could see uh, what our radios were doing, especially for the uh, CW guys and, and digital guys, especially if you're running FT8. Lithium iron phosphate batteries don't really like to put out if you're running 100 watts or so on FT8. Uh, they're not going to put out the full current for very long. You're going to start losing wattage pretty fast. At least that's what happens with my other lithium phosphate batteries. So we're going to test that. But uh, let's hop over to uh, their website for these batteries. So here we can take a look at some of the stats. Obviously, it's a lithium iron phosphate battery. We've got our integrated battery management system that's going to control uh, and monitor the cell voltage there. Ultra long life, uh, depending on your depth of discharge, at 100% depth of discharge, you can probably figure about 2,000 cycles, 3,000 with an 80% depth of discharge, and 4,000 cycles if you only discharge this down to 50%. So that's pretty typical of uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, it is a drop-in lead acid replacement, much, much, much lighter. And they're somewhat environmentally friendly. They're not nearly as uh, caustic as lead acid batteries. And uh, obviously you got your LCD display. 12.8 nominal voltage, nominal capacity 12 amp hours and 153 watt hours out of it. Operating voltage 10 to 14.4 volts. Nothing special there. That's typical lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, F6, that's the kind of terminal, 1.8 kilos. So what's that? Probably about three pounds or so, four pounds. Uh, five-year warranty. That's something to consider there. If anything ever happens, you got a nice five-year warranty, so that's great. And it's IP56 rated, so if it does get a little wet, you'll still be okay. Charging voltage, we're going to charge it up to 14.4 volts. That is typical, and here's the cutoff voltage, 10 volts. Uh, again, that's the battery management system that's going to do that uh, for you. So if you get down to 10 volts, it's going to cut it uh, off. Charge current max is 12 amps. Your discharge current you're going to get 10 amps continuous and 20 amps burst for 10 seconds. We're going to test that. Protection, we've got overcharge protection, over discharge protection, over current protection, cell balancing functions, and over temperature uh, protections. And these are going to be the same for all of the other batteries, including the 24 amp hour. Some of the specs are going to jump up. 24 amp hour, you're going to have a 24 amp charging current, which is 1C, basically. So some of the stats just go up, but uh, pretty much everything else is going to stay the same. Uh, with the 24 or the 50 amp hour batteries. So now I want to test that current draw. They say 10 amp hours continuous, 20 amp hours for about 10 seconds. Well, I want to put this through the K at MRD challenge. So <laughs> you can see here is my HF power. Uh, sorry about the glare there, but HF power means basically CW power on the 891. So 
So that's set to 100 watts. Now, typically when you're running FT8 or CW, specifically FT8, if you're going to key down for a long period of time, you get a lot of uh, sag in lithium iron phosphate batteries. So uh, I've just got my CW Morris uh, key here and uh, I've got it set to straight key. So let's key down and see, I've got my current meter here. It's really hard to see, but this top left, we're drawing a solid one amp right there. Uh, we can see, I'm gonna key down and uh, for over 10 seconds and we'll see what happens. We'll see if we get either anything happens to the battery with the built-in BMS or if we start losing power there. Let's go ahead and key up. So just under 100 watts, what we're getting now, that's five seconds. We're pulling 15.2 amps, that's 10 seconds. Here's 15 seconds. So we're not losing any power. Look at that though, I don't really trust that. A little bit of sag there, but that's, I mean, that's just taking a beating and no problem whatsoever. Still pulling 15 amps, now we're drawing, pulling a little bit less. Nothing happened, this didn't shut off. I don't know if that's really a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, you can see the battery starting to recover though, which is typical. Uh, you're going to see a sag in, in these kinds of batteries when you put that much of a draw on it. So we didn't get a 20 amp draw, we got a 15 amp draw, but uh, it took it no problem. And it said 10 amps continuous. So with a 100 watt radio, I don't think you're going to have any problems uh, with digital. I didn't bring my signal link with me. I'm on holiday for Thanksgiving, so I'm not in Texas. Uh, I forgot to bring my signal link, otherwise I would hook this up to FT8 and see what that was but I uh, just wanted to get this video out because I'm super excited about it. Next, I'm gonna throw this on a time lapse and see what kind of capacity we actually get out of this. So for the capacity test, I went ahead and charged the battery fully and then ran the 891 just on receive overnight. And uh, we ended up pulling 11.376 amp hours out of this, which is within the uh, margin of what a, a 12 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery uh, would garner us. Quite frankly, I've gotten full capacity out of some other batteries that I have. So usually uh, you can expect about 90% of the rated capacity and surely we have this. So this is not, uh, not anything bad by any means. Uh, the interesting part is that it shut down at, uh, everything shut down at about 11 and a half volts, uh, which was kind of interesting. Usually you should be able to run it to about 10 volts. Really, once you get to about 12.8 volts, any really usable amount of power is kind of eh. Um, but I'm surprised we couldn't squeeze out a little more from this and uh, that it didn't go down to 10 volts uh, where the BMS would, would shut everything off. So uh, I'm going to do a little bit more testing on this and uh, see what I can come up with. But that's going to be beyond the scope of this video. So that's what we found out. 11.376 amps out of this 12 amp hour battery. So there we have it, folks, a very first look at the PO4 Power from Gigaparts. Don't forget to use that discount code if you want to save 5% on these. Get yourself a good Christmas present. Uh, that code should be good for the foreseeable future. It's not going anywhere. If you have any questions, do hit me up in the comments. I try to answer all of them. Go buy more batteries. <laughs> I'll need more lithium iron phosphate batteries. I'm just as much a battery geek as I am an antenna geek, so I'm really excited about this. Anyway, guys, a very big thank you to Gigaparts for sending me this to uh, test out and play with, and thank you guys for watching another episode of K&MRD Radio Stuff 73.